them from back to us. Oh yeah, ting a ling, ting a ling. Ring the bell, ring the bell, ring the bell. Bayhill News News Network is an internet radio. We are affiliate with Fun City Radio USA, Cancardi Radio and Success Radio Canada and Blaze Nation Media Group. You can find Bayhill News Network at www.bayhillnews.net. Mondays and Fridays, it's the biggest conversation right here on Bayhill Radio Station. Bell the nation, bell the nation, bell the nation. We're going to be talking solutions. So, why not tune in and make your contributions? Big Hill Radio, giving the best expressions of you. To call into Big Hill's News Network, the number to dial is 1784-529-8518. It's right here on the Hill Radio Station with your host, the one and only Doris Jones. Hi, good evening. Good evening from the shores of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. My name is Doris Charles and we are coming to you live, live from the streets of Kingstown here in the capital city. Uh, today is a bright and sunny day, but nonetheless, we have a lot of people milling about. And why? Because today, the 19th of November, is the date on which a, how do you call it, mandatory vaccination was ascribed to us by the current Prime Minister, Ralph Gonzalez. And um, you can follow it on the news as far as what he has dictated to us and so that's why i have come to town in solidarity with so many persons who are on the front line here the crowd is not as heavy as was anticipated but nonetheless we are here our topic today basically is about democracy and this is part one really democracy in st vincent and the grenadines and what exactly are we facing when it comes to the mandate. We have lined up to speak, lined up to speak with us, um, um, Kenson, and Kent, Kent is supposed to, he's supposed to be having a chat with us soon. But as usual, we begin with our thoughts for today. He has shown you, O oh mortal man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to work humbly with your God. Indeed, indeed. Um, we were just being greeted there by the um, representative. I think she was from the North, North Windward area. She's just passed. 
and in chorus was saying, He has shown you, O man, O mortal man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I want to greet everybody who is listening to me at this time. All the way down in Africa, various African states, over in Canada, here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, United Kingdom, the USA. If I have forgotten to mention any place, I just want to say to you, in your sitting room, wherever you are, may God richly bless you. And may you continue to allow his face to shine upon you and give you more grace. You know, um, Churchill came to describe democracy as the worst form of government, except for all those others, for other forms that have been tried from time to time. Many forms of government have been tried and will be tried in this world of sin and war. No one pretends that democracy is perfect for all wise. Indeed, it has been said that democracy is the worst form of government, except for all other forms that have been tried from time to time. He is reportedly, reportedly to have said this in November of 1947. Hello? 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 Okay, are we on? All right. Okay, yes, so we are live. So thank you. So some claim, welcome back. We had a short break in transmission there, and I was quoting from Winston Churchill when he famously described democracy as the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. And so we are here on the protest line in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and we want to actually have a, a discussion with one, Kenson. I think he's on his phone right now, and soon we will grab him to come to our phone um, soon, so that he'll be able to talk with us. So, as I was saying, that um, some claim that this was a humorous um, thought of Winston Churchill, and behind it all, there is an assumption that democracy is probably the best system human beings have so far devised in order to organize the affairs of humans by humans, so to speak. We claim by implication that we have a form of democracy. What we call it? Parliamentary democracy or Westminster style democracy? Sometimes you, you question and you wonder, well, what exactly that means? So, um, and we are signaling to, we are signaling to, um, to Kenson right now. And we want to bring him in at this time. Kenson, we are live. Oh. Yes, yeah, so I will pull out, um, my phones and then you'll be able to talk with, with our listeners. We have a list listenership all over the world, basically. Mm -hmm. Canada. America, Africa, thereabouts. And today you would agree with me that we are being challenged in terms of interpretation of democracy. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so oh, yeah. I, I, um, I was told that I must pull out this and mm -hmm. then let you talk. Right. Um, so if you give us probably uh, five minutes. Mm -hmm. no yes. problem. Um, well, my name is Kenson King. Um, I... I have been, well, I said that I'm a, a, a political and social activist, but I just see myself as somebody who is standing up in defense of democracy, um, standing up in defense of my country, standing up in defense of my family, and so forth. So, um, but if I'm to be labeled a social activist, a political activist, so be it. All right, um, we're standing here because, you know, we're, we're against the, the trampling of the constitution, the trampling of the rights of intention, the trampling of the right to bodily autonomy, the right to choice, to freedom of speech, to freedom of choice, and all of these things. And if we don't try to secure these things now, where is it going to end? 
And at what point are we going to say that's enough of my rights that have been taken? You know, so if if we don't if we don't stand up and do what we have to do now, who is going to do it for us? And what kind of what kind of um of generation are we going to be bringing up behind of us? Because at the end of the day, we are the ones who have to teach the the, the, the future generations how to stand, how to fight. If we don't stand up for or against things, what are we teaching them to just fold? Every time society says you must fold, you actually have to fold. Or uh, when society when society brings you a war, you just you just try to duck your head and let it blow over. We can't do that. And so I'm going to continue standing along with Miss Charles and others. We are going to continue to be the 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 soldiers for democracy in Saint Vincent. So thank you, Miss Charles. Thank you for. Okay. Yes, are you hearing me now? Am I live again? Hello? Hello? Just let me know that you're there. All right, so that was Kenson giving us his, his version of what exactly is happening here in St. Vincent and Grenadines. So as I say, we, let me see if I could read some of the placards. It has Ralph Egon Sars is a tyrant and a terrorist. The other one is that Ralph, you are the worst time to go. Bodily and not to me is a right. I saw, yes. There will be no bowing to any mandate. There's another one that there is a war being waged against you and yours. What is going to be your response? The other one is the other one is the choice is yours. Stand firm. Yes, and the other one is Ralph Matthias must catch you and um, say no to mandatory vaccine twat twat and so the discussion rages because as we said today supposed to be the deadline of of um, for the implementation of mandatory vaccine further up you have a number of persons who have bowed their knees who have covered under the pressure and they have lined up for fear that the weekend will bring some murderous um, connotations. Um, they are standing in front of the financial complex where Prime Minister is supposed to be online. So it's supposed to be somewhere inside. As a matter of fact, we also have now a number of, we have a huge truck coming through that is dealing with promotion for vaccines. And we are giving away a number of um, digital celebrating Christmas and doing all sorts of things to get our attention. Yes. Uh -huh. So, um, the competition, yeah, the competition is really thick here, and music is really, is really high. But nonetheless, we'll try to talk. We'll try to talk. So, they claim that they're going to give prizes on to prizes. So, for the next five minutes or so, we are going to have this, this, this competition going up. But nonetheless, I hope this is not going to take us away from what we are actually discussing. So we were talking about what is the what's the meaning of what this stuff not blocking at and is that what we actually have in in this country ready. I hope you are hearing me. Alright, so I am going on the presumption that you have to hear me because I think it's deliberate that where we are seated, uh, where the discussion, where the uh, persons are placarding, we have a specific
Right now, a one house, that is the Parliament of St. Vincent and Grenadines, is known as what, a unicameral body, a single legislature, it has a single legislative chamber, and um, known as the House of Assembly with 21 seats, consists of 15 elected members and six appointed senators. So the House of Assembly in St. Vincent and Grenadines is located to the, on the opposite side to where I am actually seated. The House has, as we would say, a number of members. Seen represent single member constituencies that are elected using the process of voting. They first pass the vote. Um, and then when it comes to senators, there are six that are appointed by the Governor General on the advice of the Prime Minister, and then four are appointed to represent the government, and two to represent the opposition. One member as well is the Attorney General who is appointed, and another member is the Speaker of the House, who is elected by the government members of the House in consultation with the opposition. But I want to bring something to our attention with, with specific reference to the, uh, the whole issue of dual citizenship. Here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have had several discussions relating to uh, dual citizenship. What exists at the moment? We have a we have an emergency medical service on, on the ground. And uh, okay, our friend has just appeared. All right, okay, and they are actually on a radio program. Yes, I have. So you wanted to have a few words with me? Okay, all right, okay. All right, yes, so we were discussing um, dual citizenship according to section 35. Hold on a minute, I think, um, yeah. 
Dual Citizenship, Section 35 of the People's Representation Act. The People's Representation Act is qualification for members. And I want to hit, at, when I say hit, I want to expose something here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines with specific reference to the opposition leader who is holding a position, and the position is, he holds that position according to the law. He holds it unconstitutionally. And he is allowed to, by some reasons that I do not yet understand. The Prime Minister of the country in 2018 did make reference to that particular matter. And it is well documented. Um, it was reported on to say that he, being the current Dr. Godwin Friday, should definitely not be holding a position in government, as well as I think there's another elected member of parliament who is Fitz, Fitz Bramble. But for sure, I wrote to Dr. Friday. I sent him an article that I had written in and published in one of our newspapers online and showed him, according to law, that he is sitting in Parliament unconstitutionally. And I am yet to be proven wrong. The People's Representation Act states, and respecting the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Part 5 of the People's Representation Act, Qualification of Members, 35.1 states that no person shall be qualified to be elected or appointed as a representative or a senator. Hearing in this section refers to as a member of the House of Assembly, if he, A, and I think I am zeroing in on A, is by virtue of his own act, under any acknowledgement of allegiance, obedience, or adherence to a foreign state, a foreign power, or a foreign state. And what we are looking at this evening, in the whole context of what is happening here, if you have issues that are unconstitutional, those issues are supposed to be dealt with. We have members in Parliament who do not understand their role, and therefore, by virtue of them not understanding their role, you have a trickle-down effect. We have all sorts of confusion. Yes, all, all sorts of confusion. Yes, we have all sorts of confusion that is happening between St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And it appears as if it is a country that is. Get, um, things are getting out of hand. Not that it is ungovernable, but the state of affairs that currently exists is quite dicey, quite, quite, quite troubling. Here we have a minister of government, the opposition leader. The opposition leader said he was elected. There were attempts to at least report the matter to the um, director of elections supervisor of elections, but somehow the populace seem to be not as strong in terms of their advocacy. And so this dual citizenship, the case of the Attorney General of St. Kitts, St. Kitts or St. Christopher and Nevis, who was the appellant, and Dr. Denzel Douglas, respondent, they appear before the Honorable Dame Justice M. Pereira, and look up this case. DBE Chief Justice, the Honorable Madam Gortel, Tom, Justice of the Appeal, the Honorable Mr. Paul Webster, Justice of Appeal. And, you know, that's a word, a word about duly elected members. Once you have two passports, that's not allowed. But Dr. Godwin, tried with all due respect, went on to explain that St. Vincent and Grenadines was not foreign to another state and therefore we all belong to the Commonwealth. But in the ruling, in the ruling of the case, basically, um, let's hear what this learned judge is saying. I would therefore make, and this is page 27 of the case, and you can find that online, I would therefore make the following orders and declarations. One, the appeal, because of course there was a first case and now there, was, there is an appeal. The appeal is allowed. And the order of the learned judge is set aside. Two, it is hereby declared that 
in that case where Dr. Denzel Douglas was questioned about his constitutional right to be sitting on the opposition as leader of the opposition and holding two passports, one being a diplomatic passport for the Commonwealth of Dominica and the other his passport, his normal passport. Against the law and the justice, it's hereby declared that Dr. Douglas, Dr. Douglas, by reason of his becoming a person who, by virtue of his own act, is under an acknowledgement of allegiance, obedience, or adherence to the Commonwealth of Dominica, in breach of Section 28.1a of their Constitution, is required pursuant to Section 31.3c of the Constitution to vacate his seat in the National Assembly. That holds true for every state within the Commonwealth realm of nations. It holds true for every state within the organization of Eastern Caribbean states. It holds true for every state that belongs to the grouping called CARICOM. Each state holds out itself to the international community as, a, as an internationally recognized sovereign state and therefore is foreign to each other. That is so basic. That is so basic in terms of our understanding of our, our allegiance to our own country is that I, I fear for some of our technocrats who sit at certain levels and who claim to have understood this and interpreted the Constitution and interpreted it properly. So if you have an opposition leader who does not understand his role, then I'm questioning his ability to rule, to serve our people at a level that would carry us beyond the 24th century. So basic. Um, yes, so, so that is one of the issues I am picking out at this time in terms of just um, an elected parliament should be made up of one house, the parliament of St. Vincent and Grenadine, unicameral body, and the other thing is that um, we have, yes, we have 15 representing, representative single member, they represent single member constituencies and are elected by, uh, and are elected using a plurality voting, also known as the first past the post. Six are known as senators and are appointed by the Governor General. Four senators are appointed to represent the government and two to represent the opposition. One member is the Attorney General, who is appointed. One member is the Speaker, who is elected by the government members of the House in consultation with the opposition. And um, so I commented on basically on, on the opposition leader. And his position in keeping with um, the whole of two passports. Three, a government is formed by the political party or coalition that has majority support in the House of Parliament. A, or a prime minister who heads the government. Five, a ministry which is drawn from members of parliament, usually members of the government, who exercise executive authority and are accountable to the parliament. Six, an independent judiciary, well, some now even questioning, given a recent case, they even questioning uh, whether the judiciary is actually independent. And seven, an assumed a political, professional, public sector that provides the government with impartial advice and implements the government's policies and programs. So, according to Churchill, and by implication, the problem is this. Is democracy truly the worst form of government? But what about social progress in countries across the globe and in St. Vincent and Grenadines? Will any form of social progress lead towards um, democracy? Um, I want to pause a little bit in relation to 
some of the discussions that are being had around in terms of um, persons who are talking about. I'm on the radio, so I'm wondering if I could ask a few questions. I don't know. <laughs> so we are we are talking basically about what is happening um, here in St. Vincent and you don't even have to identify your name, just give your voice in relation to your opinion as to what is currently happening. So this is one a very special lady in St. Vincent Grenadine. So I'm gonna remove my earpiece so that she could just she could just give a view as to what is happening. You you know, um, in terms of anon and in anonymity she would not disclose her name she would just give um we are allowing the okay, an ambulance is passing so we are allowing so just hold one moment please so she will just say something about what is happening you ready well good afternoon to the listeners um i'm so this satisfied about what is really happening in St. Vincent and the Grenadines at this present moment is that we the people, we don't have any choice, is that we are being bullied and controlled. And uh, there are a lot of people, influential voices who are just staying quiet. And we, 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 we have to take a stand because it's better to stand for something or stand, or not stand for nothing. It is really heartbreaking. I am not under the threat of losing my job, but I am hurting because I am here and I'm seeing the first hand suffering. If you're an employee, your salary doesn't make it because every day things raise up because the cost of living is so high. And then to force people against their will. I just, I just, I don't understand the urgency. And I don't like the approach of this whole mandating of vaccine and forcing people. I, I am so disheartening and I am standing up. I mean, I just got here because I have to work with my time. But we all have to come together and stand. Unity is strength. The power is in the people. But I don't understand the people. Them have been sentient, are very coward and they are spineless. They are weak. And this is why the PM is behaving this way. This is why he's this is why he's behaving this way because the people are afraid. And we talk about democracy. The people are afraid. I don't understand why they are afraid. We are the he's the servant of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we hired him. And if he's not doing what we hired him to we are, we are supposed to hold him accountable. <laughs> And we are with the people, the people, the influential people, they are oppressing, they are supporting the oppressor. So we look the man now, they look down at us, you understand? And it has to stop somewhere. It has to stop. We have to come together. We have to come together. Just, we have to see justice run down like river. We need justice. Look at Mr. John's situation. So what, what kind of message you are sending out there to people now? Yeah, Mr. John, Mr. John, and but he was a strong supporter of the of MNU come over into ULP, and this is what he got. People have to open their eyes. Ralph do not like nobody but himself. He's a narcissist because everything is just Ralph, Ralph, and more Ralph. Vincent and time for to wake up because next is our children and it's gonna be a different story, it's gonna be a different ball game. What do you think of health wait for people? People have to come because when you look at the vaccination status, the majority of people who took the vaccine, there are more people out there who is against the vaccine. So that yeah. means the power is in the people. Why are they afraid? The power is in the people, why are they afraid? We need to get this fear out of our system and stand up. We need to form a revolution. We have to bring this government down. We can't wait five years. We can. So thank you guys for the patience. We have to bring this government down. We can't wait. We cannot wait on him and the time. Time is against us. 
This man does nothing but see means to accept high employment, crime, everything is of the opposite. Nothing. Nothing. Injustice. Nothing the man has done positively to impact the lives of Vincent Sean. Nothing. Nothing. I just want to thank you for the time, Miss Charles. Charles. And I'm going to hand back over to Miss Charles. Okay, um, we are back here. I hope you're hearing me. Okay, 529 if you actually want to, to make a call this evening to us. Yes? Yes. Okay, they had bust your head. Yeah, there is someone who is saying that that bust his head over when we had the... Um, the last protest, somebody said, was bust. Uh, the PM said, yes. They give you four charges. Uh huh. Yes. Okay, hold a minute. Let me hear what he has to say again. You want to you want to talk loud enough so that we will be able to hear. So hold one moment. Hold one moment. All right. So he's going to talk to us and let us hear what he has to say. And your name, or you don't want to... Hello? I'll go. Okay. Um, I was in protest um, where they have... Uh, and I... Them, them give me um, charges for um, instigating the protest about... The, uh, the uh, instigating the protest. Instigating about the blockage of the road. Instigating about... People sit down the road and instigating the blockage the road, um, the marching. I was John Mafford. I've been from nice area, I've been from up to Cape Acosta The lawyer? Yeah. And I don't think, well, I know, I don't protest it now. And it's nothing like, how oh, they come and they get in and it's just, nobody can force somebody to get the vaccine. So why not? Yeah. 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 Nobody can force somebody to get the vaccine. So simple. And then give me four charges. Then lock me up and give me four charges. Then four charges. So we need to put up the case for the 8th of the first month in next year. Then patches next year, the same four charges. Thank you very much. Alright, so we were talking to Mr. Um, and I hope that you are able to hear that. But um, milling around here, what we what we realize is that a lot of intentions are somewhat or the other fearful, as um, our our persons were uh, two interviewees were saying a while ago. As I said, I'm standing in front of the financial complex and looking up at the building. And there are a number of persons on the inside looking out at me. Waving. Hmm? Okay. All right. So, and there are a number of persons out even waving. And many of them are sending to me little signals and signs to say that they don't, they, they are not going to take the vaccine. But on the other hand, they are fearful of actually coming out to join the protest. Um, maybe that has to do with partisan politics. I don't know. But one thing I do know is that the government of the day, especially the head, yeah, the bus head, yes, the gentleman is still showing me the bus head. Yeah, but what is happening here in St. Vincent is that government recognizes that people are very careful. St. Vincentians are a careful set of people who, you know, they prefer to make noise on the inside at their home, so that fear that, okay, somebody may mark their face and say, well, okay, this person did this or this person did that. Yeah, police officers, one just sent a message to me a while ago to say, well, yes, Mr. Charles, I'm supportive of you. And he represents a number for the police officers. And this is really weird. The people not on the front line, you have a number of forces now who have left, but the placards are, Ralph, you are the door, time for you to go. And all of these placards are here, but in terms of persons, I understand earlier on the police, I am yet to verify that, but they claim that the police would have spoken to one or two persons to say, look, you have not had the, the, um, the authority to organize and therefore you are disbanding. 
But me, as a single individual, I'm able to take my bell, which I have done, walk along the path, once the other persons came and said, ah, yes, and continue to support in the initiative to say yes, indeed. Um, so, yes, yeah, so there's a sort of disenfranchisement, a sort of, yes, unsettling atmosphere that some persons are saying, it, because they work with the private sector, it's not, um, things are not going to happen the way that, you know, we are hoping that the mandate, there's something like, what, 10, another 10 days before um, a little grace period is given, is given. So Vincent Chance would normally bring things down to the wire. But I'm hoping that uh, through it all, things may be able to, you know, that PM would be able to reverse or alter his position, recognizing that there are pressure groups all around the place. If we don't organize properly, then you're going to find that there's a greater fallout that force will be brought to bear upon police officers, nurses, doctors, lawyers, those persons who are considered at the forefront or um, frontline workers here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Former colleagues of mine now coming out, waving their hands towards me, saying hi, um, looking at me, recognizing that there is an issue, but still are fearful of actually making a stand on the front line. But I will continue. I will continue to ring my bell. Um, I will continue um, to actually make sure that I um, make a stand on behalf of our people in St. Vincent and Grenadine. So we were discussing the first part of democracy. We were discussing the first part of things that make us tick here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we are where we are. I think we should pause now for a commercial cause from the station, and I'll come back to you within the next after that. Yes. Okay. So can we pause for a station announcement? Bay Hill News Network is an internet radio. We are affiliate with Fun City Radio USA, Cancardi Radio, and Success Radio Canada and Blaze Nation Media Group. You can find Bay Hill News Network at www.bayhillnews.net. For J's cakes, pizzas, and more, baked with a tablespoon of love, call us at 1784. 491-5182 Email jscakes784 at gmail.com On Instagram J-A-E-S underscore 784 Looking for a place to relax with natural cool breeze and friendly surroundings? Then check the Bay Hill Tree Bar. Located at Bay Hill Cane Garden. We have everything a bar will have. We also sell shell 20 pounds in cooking gas at the Bay Hill Tree Bar. Mondays and Fridays, it's the biggest conversation right here on Bay Hill Radio Station. Bell the Nation, Bell the Nation, Bell the Nation. We're going to be talking solutions, so why not tune in and make your contributions? Big Hill Radio, giving the best expressions of you. To call into Big Hill News Network, the number to dial is 1784-529-8518. The Salvation Army is once again seeking your assistance in bringing a smile to the faces of hundreds of needy persons during this Christmas season and beyond. As of November 12th, through to the end of December, the Salvation Army will be soliciting your financial and other support in its kettle appeal at various locations. Korea City Store, People's Pharmacy, Massey Supermarket, Singer, Courts, and Sunrise Supermarket in Arnosville. Please give generously. For further information, please contact Captains Ernest and German Gatchelin at telephone numbers 430-6321 or 430-6496 or visit the Salvation Army headquarters in Kingstown. May God bless you and have a Merry Christmas. Hello. Hey, girl. Come on. Today's biggest conversation is right here on Bay Hill Radio Station with your host, the one... And we are going to finish at 5 o'clock. It's uh, 11 John. minutes past 4, so not too long from now, yes. Mm -hmm. Hello? 
All right. Hello. Hey, girl. Come on. Today's biggest conversation is right what? here on Be Hill Radio oh Station God, with your host, the one and only Doris Charles. Yes, so welcome back. Welcome back to the beautiful island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines where we are here. Um, so, so far we have about just a handful of um, protesters, persons who are protesting against the mandatory vaccination um, proclamation by our current prime minister. There's a call for his resignation as well. There's a call for his resignation. So, but the issue is that... Um, we are discussing democracy in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yes? So, the issue is, um, we have heard of some persons give their opinions and so. If you want to call, please call us, 529 1-784-529-8518. But here's the thing. We talk about forms of social progress that should be towards democracy. And we're wondering whether or not we agree that this is so because it gives people both what they want and what's best for them. So that's the question. Right? Some claim that many, oh, here is my husband, that is called my strange husband, is indicating uh, some, yes, some strange things. Yes, yes, we're indicating some. Some, I'm on our international radio here, so her. Yeah, so the problem is that you wonder, you question a person like himself, as my estranged husband, who is shouting out across the road, and, you know, some critical comments towards me, trying to belittle me in the eyes of the public. But of course, he's belittling himself. Nonetheless, we move on because it's wondering. What kind of persons that would be in a government like this, who continues to support a government like this, that has ordered mandatory vaccination against the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines? You're questioning that. So some claim that many countries may experiment with other options or styles of government, and we're wondering well, what style of government we actually have in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, but they'll eventually be discarded as inadequate, and democracy indeed will prevail. But is this a naive view, or perhaps even a dangerous delusion? Does it foster complacency, a sense of gloating perhaps about the inevitable spread of what one perceives as democratic ideals and practices? As if politics ran on rails towards a certain destination? Is it true that a final, that a democratic future under the present government in our tiny island is far from assured? In fact, as we review what is happening in this country today, is it democracy? Or can we identify another type of government instead of democracy? Can we identify what some describe as a rise of, rise of despotism in St. Vincent and Kennedy? I researched the term democracy. I read a few books, but one stands out. One that is written by Professor John Keen, who was the then professor of politics at the University of Sydney, and the written chap then from Berlin. He was critical to the functioning of the city democracy network. He is considered, <laughs> he is considered one of the world's leading writers on the history, theory, and practice of democracy. He is the author of books. Okay, so is it? He, uh, he is the author of books like A Short History of the Future of Democracy and the Life and Death of Democracy. So we have set competition coming up, 529-8518-174. 529-8518. Again, the digital, uh, there's a digital 
bus a truck that is obviously around Kingstar and we are standing here in front of that. So we are going to have some stiff competition. So I'm wondering if we can go back to Master Control for a few more announcements and thereafter we will be able to entertain questions from you. All right, so can we now pause again for uh, the commercial break? The sound of the tsunami is one. The Hill News Network is an internet radio. We are affiliate with Fun City Radio USA, Cancardi Radio, and Success Radio Canada and Blaze Nation Media Group. You can find Bay Hill News Network at www.bayhillnews.net. I am Dr. Sullivan yeah. Jones. Join me this Wednesday and every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on bayhillnews.net. That's www.bayhillnews.net for my One Life Academy Manifestation Workshop. You will learn how to communicate with your emotions to the universe and manifest all your desires. Join your host, Ross Bishai, for Stepping Into The Light every Friday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Big Hill Online Radio and Kankadi Radio. Ras Bishai steps into the light of food and agriculture, culture and liberty. Stepping into the light lifts the level of your self-consciousness, activates your collective security genetic code, raises your earthly vibrations. To win in this Armageddon, you must listen to Stepping Into The Light with host Ras Bishai and... To call into Bay Hills News Network, the number to dial is 1784-529-8518. It's Vinci Liberators Inc. fundraising raffle. Join Friday, December 31st, 2021. First prize, a laptop. Second prize, an air fryer. Third prize, a coffee maker. Consolation prize, a $50 gift card. $3 for ticket, book of six fifteen dollars For Info contact Patricia 347-243-4609, Kimberly 646-703-5989, Elliot 347-285-6806. You can get tickets from any member of Vince Liberators Inc. And winners, you need not be present. And only Doris Okay, good afternoon and welcome back from the streets of Kingstown in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am your host for this evening, Doris Charles. Um, yeah, so, um, so what we, the current situation is that one more person have actually um, left the scene, but nonetheless, the flockyards are still here, littering, great, they still littering this area. They have about, what, just a handful of persons that are sitting around enjoying the evening, the evening breeze and just the atmosphere. And a number of persons are passing backward and forward and just saying, you know, welcome. Happy to see us and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. yeah. So you any? Yes. Yeah, so we are well, we are welcoming persons now to call in five one seven eight four five two nine eight five one eight one seven eight four five two nine eight five one eight. Remember, we were discussing democracy aspects of it, and this is phase one. We have taken in some discussion from persons who are milling around and who are directly affected and we welcome those discussions. So you're you're free to call. You're free to call. So let me start another version, another section. Yeah, another section of the discussion which says that is it true that a democratic future under the present government in our tiny island is far from assured. In fact, as we review what is happening in this country today, is it democracy? Or can we identify another type of government instead of one that is democratic? 
Um, and so Professor John Keane talks about in a short history of the future of democracy and the life and death of democracy, he talks about despotism. Ferdigan to dig a little bit deeper into what is despotism is not even as I try to analyze our own so-called democratic reality in St. Vincent and Grenadines. Despotism is an old-fashioned word. I guess that some may be asking about what is meant by that. And I have discovered that this word has some ancient Greek. You know, it has some ancient Greek underpinnings where the despot, they were the heads of a household, the father of a household who looked after, uh, took care of, won the heart, the loyalty of women and children and slaves in the household. And the term was revived during the times of the late medieval Europe and came to refer to Eastern regimes like India, China, and or what was known about them. So during the 16th and the 17th centuries, the term despotism had quite a life in which there were strongly Orientalist, con Orientalist connotations. The East is barbaric, there is servitude, there is darkness, there are strange things that happen, and these are regimes that tyrannize people, whereas Europe is different. Are uh, there analogies that we can find in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, where a regime over the years, from the 1700s up to the present time, displayed barbaric actions, where servitude, darkness, and strange things happen to tyrannize people? Uh, but some may ask, isn't this an era of enlightenment? You know, and so you are asking the question, asking a number of questions about enlightenment. Then there were times during the second half of the 18th century where the term underwent change, change of meaning, and it became revolutionary. In the person of Montesquieu, who was a French liberal parliamentarian, a champion of the view that Europe is increasingly in danger of a modern form of top-down rule that came from the East. Remember anything from history? Then remember the American Revolution from the pages of history? It was central to that particular revolution. And our, as we re read, we were told that the idea is that monarchs in Europe were becoming blind. They started or engaged in acts of bullying. And they violated constitutions. And there was a need for them to be overthrown. I am questioning whether losing touch with the people losing touch with the needs of the nation and the interests of the people and so on and becoming more tyrannical could be linked to a leader becoming despotic, tyrannical, saying do as you are told and so on. So yes, seven, sorry, one, seven, eight, four, Five two nine eight five one eight. This is the biggest conversation from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are coming down to the last, what, 15 or 20 minutes of the program. And so we are asking, if anyone needs to call in, they can call in 1-784-529-8518. 1-784-529-8518. And so... The issue is this, that history declares that in the half of the 18th century, it was very clear, the great fear that the world generates, the great fear of despotism was in practice, where there was a top-down bullying, fear-inducing type of quality that nonetheless or nevertheless manages to win the loyalty of significant parts of the population. We are wondering whether or not this is so here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. 
So despotism is a system of voluntary servitude. Do we have that in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Is there um, any voluntary servitude? Despotism manages in various ways to generate loyalty among powerless subjects, loyalty to the despot and to the system of despotism. I want us to understand that here lies the problem, or rather, here lies an understanding of the nature of despotism. According to Professor Keane, despotism generates that problem of voluntary servitude, that loyalty of relatively powerless people to top-down power, which is central to the problem. There are contemporary developments, even as we speak, and so some countries parade as, as, as having democracy, but indeed, their leaders can be described as despotic, and therefore the country is considered as having been run by a despotic regime. One is wondering what is actually happening. Why is it that there is fear in Vincentian and the Grenadines? Fear is actually identified with a particular cause. And... Uh, I have been involved in at least three or four demonstrations so far, and what I've noticed is that a great show of fully force um, was on display for the world to see, and thereafter our people became, how do you say, um, careful of actually moving from one state to the next. I'm looking at a police vehicle, and one of them whispered to me not too long ago, they didn't send uniforms. Tell the child, don't say what? We are not going to take that vaccine. So maybe we are looking at um, another 10 days or so when persons will definitely be putting the government to test, to the test, because again, the deadlines have been shifted. So it's like a, a standoff here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Is this a despotic government? Is St. Vincent and the Grenadines being run by a despot? I am dressed in total black today, and I have a sitting on the sidewalk here now, so I have more persons that have left. And the sun is gradually easing its way across the sky. And the traffic is increasing in terms of persons leaving Kingstown here in St. Vincent Grenadines to travel homewards, either to the windward or the leeward side of the island. And soon I'll be making my way as well. Um, but the issue is just that folks continue as per usual. There seems not to be a sense of urgency. There seems not to be a sense of recognition that there is impending doom for many of our nation, nationals here in St. Vincent and Grenadine. We continue to talk. We continue to highlight the fact that countries like well, a small country, as I'm told, Gibraltar, uh, or island, um, that Gibraltar has, what, double vaccination, and there is a rise among its population, population, among those who were asked to be vaccinated, I think from 12 years and upwards, the eligible persons to be vaccinated, those persons, are down. there's a breakout among those persons. And as you keep reading the news, you recognize that there is a general pushback against the um, vaccination and the mandate thereof. So, yes. So that is the situation that currently exists here in St. Vincent. And, uh, you know, um, so we are wondering, um, this pushback that is happening, how far that can we go? The stance that we have taken, how far can persons actually remain? What is it that you're looking for? Will people bow? Vans and buses, people are properly clad. They have um, their masks over their faces. They're not sure exactly what it is uh, that is happening in terms of the particular disease. Some are looking at me with um, eyes of caution, um, questioning whether or not, why is it that I'm actually reporting from outside of the financial complex here in St. Vincent and Grenadine. But I continue to lobby and to push the agenda on no vaccination for our people in St. Vincent and Grenadine. I will continue to take that stand because I am of the opinion that we are being led down a rabbit hole 
and we are not sure exactly what is at the end awaiting us. Gene therapy that is used in the vaccines according to Dr. Malone, Dr. Robert Malone, and maybe there's some good to be had, but there's more bad than good that it has been envisaged and published in the literature that we have read so far. And so 5178452985188 is your phone call, is your number to call. 1-7-7-8-4-5-2-9-8-5-1-8. So there we go. So there are contemporary developments, even as we speak. Some countries parade as having democracy, but indeed their leaders can be described as despotic and therefore the country is considered as having been run by a despotic regime. When people's lives are destroyed and people have had enough, the regime has to be demolished. Such leaders must go. And some, here are some questions that we must consider here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Given that the many newspapers have indicated to us that there, that indicated to us that for a number of years now, the following were captured there. And what do we do? What do we say? What can we be or become? An apparent top-down bullying, fear-inducing type of policy, a process of civil government exists. The other one is that even though these things are happening, a particular leader manages to win the loyalty of significant parts of the population, its subject population. Uh, that a sort of voluntary servitude exists among its population. And they do so because of fear. On my several walks, I have encountered this through direct messages or information sent to me that a fear exists among key people within our population fear that persons will lose their jobs. Someone was trying to shut me up on one of my walks, almost stopping traffic to pelt insults and the like. I am thankful that we do need some of these people around us, that when they pelt these insults and so on, we use those as manual for our group. So I welcome, I welcome those issues. So trying to stop me from protesting and ringing my bell. That's why we have this particular program called Bell. Bell the Nation. So I'm belling the nation this evening. Belling the nations of the world. Trying to stop me from protesting? That could never happen. Trying to stop me from ringing my bell? That could never happen. Because my bell is signified to the nation that there is enough for us to cry again, to bell out again. Using methods to try to shut up a population who only serve the current administration because of fear. Or is it because of loyalty? Now this cannot be right. But there are questions that continue to be asked. Mandatory vaccination is just a symptom of what is happening in the country at this time. A symptom of the greater disease of manipulation of the entire world population, of an attempt to alter the constitution of various duly constitutionally formed countries all over the world. Contrary to how the process is outlined in the constitution, which is the supreme law of the land. One cannot alter the constitution without following the very procedure that is outlined there. And so what hurts me is the fact that fear and intimidation rule is at an all time, well I shouldn't say rule, but it is an, at, at, at an all time high in this place. I ask myself the question as to how could this be? How could grown men and women arrive at that place where they are afraid to challenge and or question a leader as to the why and to the how 
of a particular matter. I voted for this government, remember? I and thousands of others did just that. I was part of this administration, but when the interest of the public is at stake, I must question my government as to why. What is it that hurts us? What is it that we are forced to do? So one seven eight four five two nine eight five one eight. If you cannot get me this way, then please email me at bellination at gmail dot com. Bellination at gmail dot com. And the number to call again, if you are fearful of calling for your man, I received a message a while ago to say that someone is fearful of calling, fearful of repercussions on their business. So this fear is actually endemic in our society in St. Vincent and Grenadines, which is quite fascinating. So I am probably quite bold or quite, I don't know what you call me then, because as a former diplomat, I am able now to come out and stand up and say, we are all human beings and I'm asking, I'm questioning, I am demanding that um, the government of today, uh, Ralph Gonsalves, be removed from power, that he go home, he's tired because his vision is blurred when it comes to us being given a mandate that probably we are the only country on this side of the globe that continues to, to actually insist that there is a mandate specific to mandatory vaccination. I do not understand why. So I voted for this government, remember? And I was part of an administration. But when the interest of the public is at stake, I must question my government and ask why. It cannot be that I live on to myself and have no regard to others in my community. And I'm saying that to all of our all of our, our Vincentians, whether you are overseas or here in St. Vincent, I'm saying that to everyone under the hearing of my voice, that we cannot live on to ourselves and have no regard for others in our community. We are members one of, of another. We are one people, my fellow Vincentians, my fellow world citizens, one people, and I'm calling on other women I'm calling on other men who see it necessary, who feel the pride and understand the greater issues at stake to join with us within the National Liberation, Liberation Movement to make a difference. Join with us in the National Liberation Movement to make a difference. There is no greater than to rise to the occasion and be the change that we need to see. There is no greater than to rise to the occasion and be the change we need to see. I call you the women of this country. I call you the women of this country if the men are afraid. I call you the men of this country if the women are afraid. I call you the men of this country if women are afraid. And what gave me the right to call is because I'm a Vincentian with a heart. And I love my people. And I'm asking for us to join together. I don't think men are afraid. And I don't think women are afraid. Afraid in the sense of standing up for the rights of the people in their communities. And I believe the time would be right. But I'm never, nevertheless making a call for us to take a stand. Women, they are looking at us. Men, they are looking at you. We are looking at you. And so I give you my word on the authority of God's word that I will continue to serve us, our people, for the greater good. For the greater good. The day I arrive at the place in my consciousness where I can no longer serve as God has inspired me to do, so to do, I will step aside and allow others to carry the mantle. But I continue to call for us to join together to make St. Vincent and the Grenadines a better place. I'll continue to talk until one and two and ten and fifty men and women come together so that we make a greater difference in the political scene here in St. Vincent and Grenadines. It is an uphill task and I'm not afraid to stand alone. Right now, beyond, you have men and women now who have moved away beyond what, 15, 15 feet 
And so I am sitting here on the island, looking at traffic moving up and down and continuing to let my voice be heard as if one crying in the wilderness. But I know that I'm not the only one. There are many more persons who continue to voice their opinion. Maybe not on this medium, but they continue to voice their opinion. And people are listening, people are looking. They are knowing for sure that there are other people who stand like a grave with their faces to the fore. I care not what happened to my body. I care not what happened to me in the sense that I'll continue to speak for the men and women of this country, knowing for sure that some of them who do not want to take that vaccine will not take it. Some who uh, having considered everything they have taken it, so be it. But the rest of us will, I will continue to speak for those who do not have a voice. I, 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 do, I, I feel very, very, very moved that I must continue to do. And so I ask us to join in the National Liberation Movement. We are soon to register as a viable entity and we are serving notice of this fact. And therefore, if your answer to the question is a resounding yes, to the question as to whether our current leader is acting as a despot, then you need to act for your own safety and for the safety of your children and their children. We, the National Liberation Movement, of which I am a part, will support you in your call and we will support each other in the call for the resignation of the current Prime Minister of this country. We had a slogan yesterday when I was on that walk, Ralph, go home because you are tired. And I so believe that. He has reached the end of his tenure. He knows that. It is the beginning of the end for him. And we don't want any harm come to him, but we want him to go home to rest. He has done enough for this nation. But when you get to a place where you ignore the cries of human beings like yourself, and you are hell-bent in vaccinating them, hell-bent in doing all sorts of things to engender fear, hell-bent in doing everything else to cause an uproar in people's lives, sending others, husbands and wives, to create conflict and confusion in their homes, then something has got to be wrong with individuals like that. And so... The National Liberation Movement wants you. We want you. So there's a call for the resignation of the Prime Minister of this country. Once you have found him, well, I wouldn't want to say guilty, but you have found him to have acted contrary to your best interest, then it is time for him to go home. He is guilty of acting contrary to the rules of democracy and good governance. He has reportedly refused to listen to the population, to listen to the people who voted him to office. And therefore, it's time for him to make room for a new set of rulers, a new set of servants of the people. We have come to a critical stage. Demonstrations everywhere. Fear stalks the land. There is a one track to do this, and we need to listen and to take heed. If I can speak to persons like Claude or Schwab, who is the founder of the World Economic Forum, if I can speak to persons like Mr. Bill Gates, and if I can speak to those 1,000 paying members of the World Economic Forum, who continues to have a philosophy that is based on gene therapy that will accelerate the process of the fourth industrial revolution. If I can speak directly to them, I will say to them that this is probably not the best way in which to manipulate and mobilize a population. Many persons are the population of this world. Many persons have died, and many more, we are informed, will die. And so we are asking to desist. Cease and desist mandatory vaccination. This is not the way to go. The world is on a collision course. This is not the way to go. And so we are asking the National Liberation, Liberation Movement through the Belly Nation program, complements as well as uh, compliments of um, Bay Hill News Network as it belts the globe. 
anywhere you are hearing my voice, we are asking for the World Economic Forum that has created a partnership with the United Nations to cease and desist, cease and desist their call for mandatory vaccination. One seven eight four five two nine eight five one eight, and you can send us your text, send us your information, send us your email through bellynation at gmail dot com. All right, so I think we have come to the end of this particular program this evening, and I will leave. Additional comments for our next program when we will get into a dedicated, the dedicated aspect of emerging despots of the 21st century, and to do the part two of democracy in St. Vincent and Grenadines, because there are some issues that need to be articulated a little bit more. But I want to thank you as we came from the streets. Here in Kingstown, I want to thank you very much for having made it possible for us to come into your home. And uh, right now, we would end once more by saying to you, by repeating to you our mantra. He has shown you, O oh motto, what is this? And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And until next time, we wish you God's richest blessings. We pray that you may continue to take good care of yourself and keep safe. We are now going to return you to the Master Control at Bay Hill News. Network. Mondays right. and Fridays. It's the biggest conversation right here on Bay Hill Radio Station. Bell the Nation, Bell the Nation, Bell the Nation. We're going to be talking solutions. So why not tune in and make your contributions? Bay Hill Radio, giving the best expressions of you. To call into Bay Hill News Network, the number to dial is one seven eight four. Five to nine, eight five one eight.